welcome to Coffee Break Blogging, where you'll learn to grow and monetize your blog in short, tactical installments you can use right away. Now here's the next episode in our series. Welcome back to another installment of Coffee Break Blogging, where this isn't just another podcast, it's a full course on building an online business based around your blog from scratch. My name again is David Risley, and if you want to catch up with us from the beginning of this course, head on over to coffeebreakblogging.com to view the full archives. Okay, so today we're going to continue talking about webinars because the last couple of episodes we've been talking about webinars and various aspects of them. Today, specifically, I want to talk a little bit about how to plan out the actual content portion of your webinar. Now, we've been uh, at the last couple of episodes, I've ended it by inviting you to download a graphic that I created uh, called the 60-minute webinar plan. And you can still download that at blogmarketingacademy.com slash webinar plan. But as you will see, and as you've probably seen if you've attended some webinars, is that um, it's very typical to get some kind of an introduction type of thing at the beginning. At the end of it, it's very typical to get presented some type of an offer, something that you can buy. And you know, for many of us, that would be the main reason that we do that webinar. In between, however, is the good old content, and you've got to plan that out. This is the part where you're giving away uh, a lot of value to people and really solving Solving some kind of a problem for them, giving them something they can walk away with of value from you, whether they buy anything from you or not. And it takes some planning. And so that's what we're going to talk about today is just some, some things to think about as you plan out your content for your webinar. Okay. So the, the big thing about your content of your webinar is that you are delivering value in advance. I mean, that is the reason why you're doing it. So I, I want you to think about your webinar not as just one big glorified sales presentation, but you're actually giving value to people that is go, they're going to have them have some realizations, have them make real headway on something, whether they buy from you or not. Because keep in mind that you're creating fans here with your webinar. Whether they buy from you on this particular webinar or not, most likely they're going to remain connected to you, remain on your list for some time. And it's very likely they might come and buy from you later. So we've got to keep in mind the end game here. And you want to make a good first impression. And so for that reason, keep keep in mind that it's not that we're just delivering content for the sake of content. You, you're delivering real value in advance, stuff that, that you would charge money for, except that you're giving it to them for free. Okay, You want them to walk away from your webinar feeling like they gained something from you and that it was worth their time, regardless of whether they buy anything from you. Okay, That's an important point. In terms of length of time, typically this portion of the webinar is going to go 30 to 40 minutes. Sometimes it's it, it can go a little longer than that. I don't recommend you go much shorter than that unless it's unless you build it in uh, in advance as it being a short webinar. Uh, but you know if if your webinar is pretty much some gloss over on some content just for the sake of style, but then you spend most of your time talking about yourself and most of your time pitching to them, then that's not a very good webinar. Are, okay, so keep in mind 30 to 40 minutes. I would lean toward more the 40 minute mark. Um, you know, don't worry too much about the time there, but you want to make sure that you're not jipping anybody. Um, and you want to make this pure content. And I put that in air quotes because it's not a phrase that I like, but a lot of bloggers use it pure content. It's not intended to sell anything. Now, there might be some things that you put into the content that are designed to lead them up to the eventual offer. That's actually a very smart thing to do. But that being said, this is stuff that should stand alone as value, whether they buy or not. Okay, You need to deliver on the promise that you make at the beginning. Now, let's talk a little bit about determining your topic. Like, what the hell are you going to do a webinar about? Okay, well... You, you want to look at it from the outside in. Uh, realize that people are going to judge the webinar based primarily on the headline. 
what is the title of that webinar? It's just it's the exact same thing with a blog post. People will look at a blog post from the outside looking in, and they're going to make an instant judgment on whether it's worth checking out. And they're going to make those that evaluation based on the headline, maybe the feature image, maybe an excerpt. What is your webinar going to look like from the outside? Look at it from the perspective of an actual headline. And to that end, hopefully you know your market well enough to know what kinds of things get a rise out of people. What are people most wanting to know? What would be their ideal um, you know, headline? What, one great idea that you could do is go over to BuzzSumo at buzzsumo.com, B-U-Z-Z sumo.com, and search your primary keyword or, or a particular topic that you're thinking about doing a webinar about and see what the most shared content out there is and what those headlines are. Because the fact that those things were getting a, a, a good solid reaction on social media means that those headlines were attractive. Okay, and that can give you some really good ideas about what you can present your webinar on. You can also look at popular blog posts that you have on your own blog. If you look at your analytics and you see that one particular blog post is just doing really, really well, well, that's a good indicator that that's a topic that gets a rise out of your market. You can look at um, if you've got a, a long history with email marketing with your audience, what emails have been getting good open rates, what subject lines are working. You know, you look at the evidence that is out there and determine what uh, good headlines are working. Now, the other thing is that you need to look at where you intend to take your webinar attendee. In other words, what do you intend to offer them at the end? Let's keep in mind that even though we're delivering valuable content, we as marketers are ultimately look, looking to take them into something that they can buy, okay? Um, and the content is the bridge that gets us there. So we need to look at what state we want our attendee to be in when we begin to tell them about our offer. And we need to have the content in such a way that will lead there in a fairly seamless way. Um, what would allow them to make some concrete headway on the transformation that you're looking to deliver? Okay, you know, I've used this tra this word transformation many, many times. That's ultimately what we're in the business of doing is enabling a transformation in the lives of our audience members. Okay, now your product, your offer that you're going to make on that webinar is going to be the ultimate delivery mechanism for that transformation. But the best way to set them up for that is to have content which begins them on that transformation and allows them to see that they made concrete headway on that transformation and, and they see it and they acknowledge it and they want more. Okay, and so for that reason, you need to make sure that the product, or sorry, that the content that you're delivering matches up to the offer that you intend to do. You know, with the with the blog monetization lab, it's very obvious by the title of that that um, that my the primary purpose of the blog monetization lab is to make a business out of your blog, to make money with your blog. I mean, that's what blog monetization means. So for that, if if I know that that's the transformation that I want to take people down. Would it make much sense for me to do a webinar about how to get lots of retweets on Twitter or something like that? No, not at all, because it's a complete topic disconnect. And so for that reason, I've got a webinar at blogmonetizationwebinar.com that really starts the transformation in a concrete way on blog monetization because it's a perfect tie-in to the lab itself. And so you need to be looking at that. But then when you got that topic down, go out and look at BuzzSumo, your popular blog post, and start to turn that into a, an attractive headline that contains a real promise that will get their attention. And that is how you're going to ultimately arrive at what you're going to be talking about. Okay? Now, moving on from that, you've got a topic in mind. Let's start talking about some of the things that go into actually planning out the webinar content itself. First of all, you want to think about that headline that we just talked about and make sure that the content that you are going to put together delivers upon that. So you might have a, a classic list style headline that says um, 10... Uh, 
I don't know if I want if I would use the word tips. Realize I'm thinking of this off the top of my head, but three you know, ten tips to uh, monetize your blog in 2016. So let's say that that was my webinar. Okay, um, I would definitely want to make sure that my content has those ten tips. So I mean, it's very very A to B here, right? You want to make sure that whatever you promise in the headline and title of your webinar that you build right into it. Okay. Now, the next thing is that you want to uh, keep in mind the mindset that you want them to be in when it comes time to present your offer. We talked a little bit about that al already. Now, what mindset do you want that to be? You want them to realize that a solution is possible and that it's real, that they can have it. Now, you also want them to realize that you just provided some of it to them, that you were the one that did it, that you can get those results, that it was clear that it was understandable, you're the one that provided that. And you also want them to think that, man, if this webinar was this information packed, the paid stuff must be just out of this world awesome, okay? That's what you want them to be thinking, all right? With that in mind, you wanna make sure that the content will get them to that point. Is the stuff that you're gonna present, is it clear, is it understandable? Are you, are you giving the webinar a structure that they can easily follow, okay? You want to present to them something that's real and concrete, not just a bunch of fluff, not just a bunch of theory that they could, they could surmise themselves with a little bit of common sense. And so for that reason, you wanna err in the, in the, on the side of things like an exact process, step one, step two, step three, a blueprint. Um, you wanna build in some, some aha moments, some, th some things that they will realize like, oh, I didn't even think about it that way. These are the things that open up their mind to possibilities and it's not gonna be just the, the same old road that they're already used to. But you want to make it something concrete, something that um, that is real training, that is not just a bunch of surface level stuff that is kind of common sense, okay? Now, you also want to paint for them the end of the transformation. Now, at that point, you're going to be kind of doing it a little bit throughout, but you're also going to be doing it toward the end. You want to know, really know what the transformation is that you deliver and what that before and what that after state is. And toward the end of your content area, but also throughout a little bit, um, you want to really paint for them what the end of that transformation looks like. Um, you know, in, in my case, I would paint the picture for them of, of what uh, running their blog would be like when they've got a real business built behind it. You know, I talk about how you don't have to write for your blog as often. You don't have those moments where you're wondering what to do with yourself. Uh, these are all things that I can not only, I can paint a very clear before and after because I really understand the people that I'm serving. So paint for them the end of that transformation, Okay. You want to build in some likability and some trust factors throughout your content uh, because you've, you've probably heard before the idea that people will buy from people they know, like, and trust. So how can you build that into your webinar? Well, you can build in some personal stories. This is a fantastic way to make good, solid points, but it also allows them to get to know you a little better, okay? So personal stories are really great. One thing about personal stories from a marketing standpoint is that People tend to insert themselves into your story. And for that reason, it's, it, they're the ones making the conclusions. It's not because you're telling them what to think. They're actually experiencing it, and they own it at that point. It's a completely different experience in terms of, uh, quote, unquote, convincing people to do things. It's because they're the one making the decisions and arriving there on their own. And you're guiding them there via the power of story. And so work in some stories, of course, having to do with your content. Don't go completely off topic here. Um, but these are things that build in um, also that element of them getting to know you and getting to trust you as well. Okay. In these stories, you'll talk about things that they can identify with. So for example, um, I have, you know, when I introduce myself at the beginning, I talk a little bit about my history. I do mention uh, some big changes that happened in my business when I had kids. Many people that I speak to in my audience can identify with having kids and, and parenthood in general. So these are things that uh, can work really well. The other thing that builds in trust factors throughout your content is the to embed success stories into it. And so a great way to do this would be to when you make a point 
uh, let's say you have 10 tips for whatever, okay? And that's your webinar topic, okay? Well, after each one, could you embed some type of a success story or case study, uh, preferably of somebody that you've helped, but if not, you can get it from someplace else, of somebody who has successfully applied that thing and gotten a result from it. So that brings a lot of different authority and social proof factors into your webinar and also lends a lot of credibility to you and the offer that you're going to be making toward the end of that webinar, okay? You want to build in some empathy also and make sure that they know that you understand them perhaps even better than they understand themselves. Not necessarily the entire package, but in relation to the transformation that you deliver. You want to make sure that they understand that you know exactly where they're at, that you can name it. You can probably even name some of the things that are going through their head and that you know, you really know what you're talking about. So name those things, you know. Now, a lot of this is best at the beginning. Uh, you want to make clear um, which end of the transformation that they're on. Um, a lot of people do this by telling their background story. And that background story, very often, <laughs> some of some the times is probably a lie, but sometimes they're putting out this background story about how they, you know, were sitting in their, living in their car or something. It's all this woe is me kind of stuff and this rags to riches thing. And if you have that and it's legit, go ahead and use it. But if not, don't, you know, you don't want to fib on any of this stuff. But these ty types of things build an empathy. Uh, it, it allows you to show that you have experienced where your people are at right now, um, that you understand it and that there is a way forward and that you figured that out, okay? That's something that you just, you want that to be embedded in it, okay? Lastly, in terms of planning points here, you want to make sure that you've got some type of a structure to the webinar. So you want to have a, 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 a basic outline to it that you know the, the main points that you plan to cover. You can spell those out at the beginning. Let them know these are the things that we're going to cover. We're going to go through this. We're going to go through this. And name four or five things. Make it clear throughout the webinar where you're at in that thing because that allows people to stay engaged and stay toward the end of the webinar. Because if you tell them up front, we're going to be talking about five different things. And here's the, the, the broad outline. Let's go ahead and get started. Point number one. Well, by the time they get to point number two or point number three, they probably, if, especially if you've held their interest, they realize that number four and five are coming, of course. So that, of course, will help them stay toward the end. So these are things that you can do if you're up front about your structure. Uh, tell them what's coming up and what the plan is, okay? Now, let's talk a little bit about structure here in terms of planning out this content. At the beginning, especially if it's a cold audience who is not that familiar with you already, you need to introduce yourself to them, okay? And so for that reason, typically you'll tell a little bit about your background story and that type of thing. Now, one important thing about this is that you don't want this to go off topic. You want to keep in mind the transformation that you're enabling for these people and keep your background story relevant to that, okay? You know, I, I am the... I'm a blog guy. I teach blog monetization and online business. Obviously, my personal life has lots of details to it that have nothing to do with that topic. I am not going to introduce them into these webinars or pretty much anywhere at the Blog Marketing Academy because it's got nothing to do with the topic. Okay, And that's the way you need to think about it, too. Most of us are multifaceted people, and it isn't as if we only talk about the one thing we're, talk we're known for on our website. So when you introduce your background story, make it relevant. And as much as you can make that background story mirror the transformation that you want to enable for your audience member, the better. Okay? Now, when you're presenting your background story and letting them know more about you, don't get too long-winded about it. You know, I've seen some people, they get into their background story, and it's like a 15 or 20-minute deal. Then they kind of go through a 10 or 15 minutes of little content bullet points, and they go right into offer. And it's like, well, where, where was the value here? I didn't come here to learn just about you and get sold a bill of goods. You know, where's the, where's the meat? So you don't want to do that. You know, you keep, they're not on the webinar to learn about you. They're there because of the promise that you made in your, in your webinar headline. So that's where you want to spend your time. At the beginning, if you're going to be introducing yourself, just keep it fairly short and sweet, okay? That's the way you want to think about it. All right, 
You can also ask people to minimize their distraction. This is something that I like to do toward the beginning of my webinars. I ask them to honor their original intention for being on my webinar. I thank them for being on the webinar, and I say, you came here for a reason. You were here to accomplish X, Y, and Z, and I want you to honor your commitment to do that. I honor your original intention and and. Do that by closing down Facebook, closing down email, and really give yourself that time to to deliver to yourself the thing that you originally came here to this webinar for. Okay, it's something along that line. Um, but by giving them that incentive to close down those typical distractions, because most people who are attending webinars, a lot of times they put the webinar off in the background and, and they're surfing Facebook or they're playing with their email or uh, whatever. And you don't really want them to do that. You know, they're not really going to get the full value out of your presentation if they're not paying any attention. You can't enable the transformation for anybody if they're not engaged. And so for that reason, you want to tell them right toward the beginning to shut all that crap down. Okay. Another thing that I like to do is tell them what they're going to learn. It, it kind of goes back to my original point about n having an outline or a structure and kind of letting your audience know what it's going to be. Well, it, that goes very nicely into telling them what they're going to learn. What are the, what are the promises that you make for that webinar? Uh, you can and, and phrase them in such a way where they're kind of teasers for what's coming up in the webinar because that will help keep them engaged toward the end of the webinar, Okay. Another thing in terms of slides, because we're all going to be using slides, uh, there's a lot of information out there you could go about different uh, styles and philosophies or whatever on how to make good slides. The thing that I'll just say is that you want to lean toward having more slides rather than less. Um, you know, if you've ever watched uh, modern television, which let's face it, we all have, Notice how often they change their camera angle, especially reality TV, which I'm going to just come right out and say it is aimed at stupider people. OK, it's aimed at stupider people. See how often they change their camera angle. It's often. Now, why do they do that? It's because that's what it takes to hold people's attention these days. It's sad, actually, but it's a case. OK, so for that reason. You want to build your webinar slide presentation so that you are switching slides relatively quickly. What you don't want to do is have a, uh, a text-only slide with a bunch of bullet points, and that slide will sit there on the screen while you talk for two or three minutes. That's too long. OK, you want to have a slide that's probably not going to be on screen much longer than 30 seconds to a minute tops. Now, if it is text, it's OK. You can do text slides. You just don't want to. You know, if you have a, a five bullet points to go over, instead of putting five bullet points on one slide, split it up into five slides. And that allows you to shift through them. Uh, you also want to put images in those slides so that it's not like mind numbingly boring. OK, um, and it, there's just. You know, use the notes field. You know, Keynote and PowerPoint both have a notes field. So you can put nothing but an image up on screen. But in the notes field, which only you would see, it reminds you what to talk about when that slide pops up. Okay. That way it's kind of a multimedia presentation. It isn't as if you're simply reading the slide deck to them because that would be boring as snot. It's, it's like they got an image which kind of brings up one thing while you're talking about another and it's this multimodal thing going on, okay? But the big thing here with slides, make sure you've got a lot, like 80 to 100 slides, and you're going to go through these things and you don't want to stay on any one slide too long, okay? Another thing about planning is that if you have um, a topic that will uh, justify having a download to it, you know, like a PDF that they can download, some type of a handout, those kinds of things will increase the perceived value of your webinar, okay? Uh, it also can allow you to have, um, you know, some value they can take with them. It allows them to feel like they really got something out of that webinar. It also, you can, of course, embed a link to your offer if you want in that download. So if you've got a PDF, say, you know, maybe I've seen some people do this where they will actually have a, uh, a fill in the blank question type thing and they'll ask you to download it at the beginning of the webinar and then while you they're go, you're going to the webinar you had them fill in the blanks and so it keeps people engaged um you know you can incentivize them if you wanted to um but these are things that just help keep them involved in the webinar okay last thing i'll mention here in terms of structure is that you can optionally optionally promise them a bonus 
at the end of the webinar. Um, and I've seen people do that in order to get people to stay toward the end of the webinar. So, you know, they'll, you know, come out with whatever, you, know, you might not even tell them what it is. You just say, I got a surprise for you at the end of this webinar. Um, you know, if in order to get it, make sure you stay toward the end, something that simple. Um, and then you come up with something that's, that's really cool. Okay. Uh, the, the last comment I'll make here, and that is that when you're actually planning out the content, you want to make sure you outline it first before you go and make the slides. Now, I've done it both ways, but I will say that the, that the presentations usually are a lot more buttoned up um, if I'm not creating the slides on the fly, okay? If I actually outline it and kind of make sure the thing flows really nicely, and I'll outline it. In my case, I'll use workflowy.com. Um, and, um, and then once I see that I'm happy with the structure, I will start creating slides to match it. And then it kind of just makes a much more buttoned up presentation at that point. Okay. All right. So hopefully among all that speaking, I just did for the last 25 minutes, uh, you got some good advice on how to help put together the content portion of your webinar. Now I'm not here today to talk about making an offer or any of that, although we will get into that, okay? I'm gonna leave you today, once again, with the uh, invitation to download that 60-minute webinar plan document. And you can grab that at blogmarketingacademy.com slash webinar plan, which again, will provide a rough 60-minute outline on the structure of your webinar, including intro, content, and the offer itself. And there's some notes in there on how to present stuff, okay? Now, in our next episode of the podcast, we will be talking specifically about that 60-minute webinar plan. So if you want to get a head start on that, again, head on over to blogmarketingacademy.com slash webinar plan, okay? Until then, I will see you next time. Thanks for listening to this episode of Coffee Break Blogging. If you like what you heard here today, we have something awesome we'd love to send you. It's called the Blog Conversion Guide, and it has nine tweaks you can make to your blog in order to increase your conversion rate to get more opt-ins and sales. As one of our listeners, we'd love to give you access to this guide absolutely free. You can get your copy right now by going to coffeebreakblogging.com. Again, go to coffeebreakblogging.com to get your copy, and we'll see you next time.